Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm gonna make a video about a cooling modification for modern well, CPU coolers and CPUs from Intel. So, the thing is, um, if you'd ever had a Pentium 4, you'd probably have kept a few things and parts from it. So, I've kept a few of these coolers from a lot of the Pentium 4s in my father's business. So the thing is with these is that they have much, much larger heat sinks than the newer ones. I'll just spill a few of those legs. I'll pick them out later. So um, the thing is, what you want to do is you want to take these legs off. First of all, you got to twist them to this position here with the peg on the right side. And uh, like that specifically. And what you do is give it a heavy pull and wiggle it forward and backward. It should come off. If it doesn't come off, what you want to do is get something like this to pry into it and then just like sort of flick that off a bit. What it does, you end up with these and these. Now, the problem with. Uh, oh, good thing. So the problem with um, these coolers is that they don't actually fit the CPU sockets because these things are further out in the newer design. So what I thought of was, well, let's cut off the ends of these so that you can actually put them in. So well, I'll be demonstrating how to do that in a second. I will now proceed to put this in my vise and cut some more. So here we are cutting into this piece. You want a backstroke with a steel saw or something. And just uh, want to And smear it through. And what you need to do now is take it out of the vise. If you have one, oh, you can saw it by hand, but it's a lot harder. And flip it around. Take that again. And cut through. If you need a vice, what you, what you only need to do is just go to a cheap Chinese shop. They sell them there for like four, no, three, four dollars. Of course, an angle grinder works here too, so you can use anything you want to cut this. Four legs have all been cut short, and what happens is now you can freely put it on pretty much any socket that Intel has made, from uh, 775 up to 1150. So, yeah, let's give it a shot. Now, what you want to do is um, take the pin. Basically, uh, just put this here for now. Up there. And take a black one as well, so the black and the transparent one, translucent, whatever you want to call it. So what you want to do is just insert one into the other, as you would normally. So just put the peg in like that, snap it in, and twist it back out. So basically you um, take one of these pegs, Push the white bit into the black bit, twist it around until the peg finds a hole, and snap it in. Now what you want to do is you pull it out a bit, like that, and you find a corner that's been clear. So basically this one where I've sawn it off. Oops. And you just want to put it in, really. Oh, 
this is probably a little bit. Just make sure you get the flat, the flats uh, facing towards us, no, well, aiming towards the center, I'd say. And basically, put all the pegs in the holes first. This is really finicky. But it does work, I'll show you. Oh yeah, so make sure you pull the black thing out before you insert it. There, that's one leg in. So you can see there. It's plugged in nice and proper. Now you want to lift the tab out. And uh, you know, Try to maneuver this into that. That's fit, so that's all good. Now I want this one to fit as well. That's fit as well. Right in. Straight up. Okay. So, so what you need to do is press down the black tab and then twist it, I believe, clockwise to tighten it. And basically what that does is that it locks down. So what I've done is I've locked down the top left and bottom right tabs. So yeah, don't put any of the um, bottom left or top right because that just, it kills your main board honestly. So yeah, just put two, it's good. So now as you can see the fans are running nicely and my new heatsink is in place. And very warm well then as well as so I try to shake this without killing my fingers. Can't shake it. It's very hard. So yeah, and that's fixed in with only two pegs on the board. And the other two are just released because they would apply too much pressure and probably break the CPU. And yeah. Is the thing is this is a bit more like um protruding out at the bottom than the stock Intel cooler for the 1155 series stock coolers and sockets. So uh, here you can see me playing CSGO and uh, I'm pretty good frames. I'm watching some guy play. Uh, yeah. Alright so here you see the actual Intel fan in operation and a heatsink as well so it's finally being installed and it's operating and this is you can uh, finally see the I've actually cleaned up my case wiring a lot most of it goes through the back now, except for the PCIe and a few of these um, SATA cables. Stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, basically right now I'm running uh, Minecraft at around 75 frames a second, I believe. And uh, it runs quite smoothly right now. And the temperatures are pretty low for a graphically intense game such as Minecraft, of course. Now, I'm gonna play some CSGO after this as well, so yeah. I'll take a look at the temperatures, and they're quite stable at around 50 degrees, and usually CPUs go quite hot, especially the ones with the flat ones. But, uh, it appears that Easy Tune 6 in the background here actually reports a lower temperature at 32 degrees, I'm not really sure. If MSI Afterburner or EasyGen 6 is actually working properly. Uh, anyhow, I'll be back in a sec. So here we are, we played a game of Hawken there. So the temperature went up to around 70 degrees according to this, but I would assume it's 50 on the other program. Or 60 max. Right. The other CPU used to go pretty high. And also, this cooler doesn't have any proper thermal paste application on it because I don't have here. Well, I'll uh, fix it up and just probably post an update to this video. But anyhow, it's pretty cool. It's a lot better than the uh, stock cooler. This is the Pentium 4 cooler, and I'll uh, see you guys.